Today I'm going to start a build series for an arts and crafts style art desk. And of course, the board I need to start with is at the very bottom of the pile. I really need to reorganize this lumber storage. This desk is a college graduation gift for my oldest kid who actually graduated last year. Part of that gift was that they could pick out a piece of furniture for me to design and make just for them. Sam has a great hobby and an art-related YouTube channel, and this desk will hopefully give him a place to work and get the kind of satisfaction I get out of building something like this. I found the lumber I'm working with from an online ad, and I found out when I bought it that the lumber had a very sentimental story for the lady I picked it up from. Her husband cut this cherry tree down from their property almost 30 years ago and had intended to build a, her a hutch of some sort with it but sadly he passed away before he could do anything but mill it and dry it. When I told her what my plans were for it she was thrilled to see it go home with me and I really love how this desk that I'm building by hand for one of my children is being built from lumber with another family's long story behind it. So while I'm milling this up let's talk about the desk and what I'm going to get built in this video. The design is very arts and crafts or craftsman style inspired and will need to be knocked down since it's a pretty big desk and will need to be easily moved and fit through a standard door. The desk will break down into three pieces, the desktop including the drawer box and two base assemblies which is where I'm starting this build. For this video I'm going to be concentrating on the four side panels. I'm starting this build the same way I tend to start most of my furniture, and that's with the legs. There will be eight legs in total, four on each base, and I'm getting them all milled down and cut to their final dimensions at the same time. I'm going to be using a lot of veneered plywood in this build. There's a lot of large panels and I just don't want to have to worry about wood movement. The first of those pieces are the tops of the side assemblies. Those tops will later become part of the drawer box and after cutting the plywood to size I need to get some hardwood milled for the edging and the veneer. I'm starting by gluing a 1 inch solid wood strip to what will become the bottom of each panel. This will be the only visible edge once the desk is assembled. I prefer a thick solid wood edge versus edge banding, mostly because it will allow me to cut in edge treatments. I'm using blue tape as clamps here because it will be just as effective and in this case it will be just a little bit faster. Once the glue cures on the panels, I need to get the edging flushed up with the plywood. The most effective method I found to do this is using a flush trim bit at the router table. This works best with an auxiliary fence that's mounted higher than the thickness of that edge banding. Some of the stock I have is these nice wide sequential slabs. They're going to be great for giving me a good grain and color match across multiple pieces, but unfortunately they weren't dried quite right and they have a pretty noticeable twist to them. I doubt I'd be able to mill any of it flat and also keep enough thickness to be useful, but for cutting veneers, it works just fine. As long as I can get a, a couple sequential veneers out of it, it'll do what I need.
There ended up being a couple of knots that had to be filled with epoxy. I'm just going to make sure to use that veneer that I cut with these imperfections on the panel sides that will end up inside the drawer box so they won't even be seen. When I do veneer work, you will see that sometimes I will veneer both sides of a panel at once, and other times I'll veneer just one side at a time. You can't veneer just one side of a panel without ending up with a cupped or twisted board, but I found that you can veneer one side at a time so long as you veneer the second side immediately after taking the first glow up out of the bag. I've never had any issues doing it this way, but I know some people will recommend always veneering both sides at the same time to avoid that warping. So last night I got my first batch of <clears throat> veneering done and for the most part it came out great but I do have one small issue I need to address um, before I can actually use one of these panels. So when I glued them up, number one, everything is oversized. The panel itself is about an inch too large once I put that um, piece of hardwood on the front of it and the veneer was about a quarter inch oversized. So these are at seven inches. The panel needs to be at six and three quarters. When I glued them up, wherever I could, I made a point of setting the veneer back about a sixteenth of an inch, to maybe an eighth of an inch on a, on a couple of them um, from this front edge. The idea is that I'm gonna take this over to the table saw and run the unfinished edge against the fence and clean the front up, then flip it around and cut it to size, which will clean that backside up. However, this one, uh, when I veneered on the second piece of veneer, when I put it in the bag, it was kind of over on the side of the bag, and I guess the bag pushed it that way. And this, this piece of veneer actually is sitting forward of the hardwood strip that was put on there. I'm not gonna have enough when I clean this up on the back end. I think I'm gonna have some exposed plywood. This will just be the inside face where it'll never be seen. It'll be inside a drawer box. However, there is some joinery that needs to happen on the top edge back here. So what I'm gonna probably end up doing is just gluing another uh, piece of veneer on behind it just to even it out. It doesn't have to be pretty. Um, it just has to be on there, but I, this is a pretty straight edge anyway. It shouldn't, shouldn't be a big deal. The first and most important step to getting joinery cut is to carefully lay out where everything goes. I always mark the position and orientation of my legs and their tops because I will, without fail, mix them up and cut something in the wrong place if I don't.
I'm going to be cutting almost all the joinery on this project on my shop made horizontal slot mortar sir. If you follow my channel, you may have seen my recent video on building my latest version of it. And I'll leave a link to that build video and to the plans on my website. But there are plenty of other alternatives to this joinery. The slot mortar sir is a lower cost shop made alternative to the domino. But if you have one of those, it'll definitely work here. You can also cut the mortises with a router and use integral tenons instead of loose tenons. And for the slats on the sides, there are some good alternatives that use a long dado and some filler pieces between the slats that would also work. Those slats are what I'm laying out here. I marked them out on the top panel and then I'm transferring those marks directly to the bottom rails to keep everything lined up. The slot mortiser works using a center line for reference, so that's all I need to mark for each of these mortises. This is just a dry fit up for now. There's still lots of joinery that needs to be cut before I can actually glue up the panels, but this feels like a good place to end this video. In the next one, I'll be doing some more veneering, well, a, a lot more veneering actually, and then getting the two base assemblies put together. Thanks for watching and keep an eye out for part two, which will be coming soon.